Barry Mang needed a new hip in 2004 at age 45. He did his homework and opted for a metal-on-metal -metal joint replacement. It sounded like a brilliant idea from all the research that I did. Um, it seemed like the way to go. It never occurred to me that uh, having metal in my body would be a bad thing. Within six months of his new joint, Barry's hip pain was back. I thought something was, something was going wrong, you know, and I could tell. And I knew it was the same type of pain, the same area, so a, kind of an a ache. You know, a real deep ache. It's uh, occasional sharp pains, but it's just like um, like a, you know, a bruise might feel, a really bad bruise. Orthopedic surgeon James Crutcher performed Barry's revision surgery and replaced his failing left hip implant. He had no connection to Barry's first surgery. The basic problem is that the metal bearing is shedding small particulates of metal and we don't know if we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg we probably are going to see a lot more than we've seen to date ball and socket joints made of cobalt and chromium were supposed to last longer and offer more stability but now patients like barry are reporting soft tissue and bone damage from metal debris it was frightening is what it was and it was a full two years which left me with a year and a half of thinking I've got metal in my body, I gotta get it out. The best option would be to have a conventional hip replacement with titanium implants and a ceramic on highly crosslinked polyethylene bearing. This bearing that you see here is probably the lowest wear bearing uh, that we have available today and it has an excellent clinical track record. Which is what Barry now has, allowing him to get back to work and do his job at the butcher shop. In Seattle, this is Mark Christopher.